At my first drift event with the Mustang, I was really struggling to drift. With so much time between events, I made a few changes to include the Make It Modular Billet Angle Kit, but I don't have it installed quite right just yet. As you can see, the Heim is actually cutting into the Heim spacer above it and below it. And you're probably wondering how. So when I added the angle kit, it actually lowered the front of the car even more to the point where I couldn't even turn the front tires. So what did I do? I raised the front up and simultaneously maxed out the negative camber on the top hats. And that really just shortened that angle of where the Heim spacer is and the control arm. And that's why it's rubbing. So today what I'm going to do is lower the car a little bit because I'm also hating the monster truck ride height and I'm going to take some of that negative camber out. Everything in the front feels way too bound up and the last time that I had that feeling was in the Challenger and I ended up breaking the top stud uh, studs on the BC coilovers. Thankfully BC sells those studs separately but the last thing I want is something to break at the next drift event and having to start changing out studs or anything else major. All right, so a little update here. I did take out some of the negative camber uh, through the top hat and I lowered the car, I'm gonna say close to a half an inch, nothing too crazy. Every time I make a YouTube video, someone starts mowing the lawn, by the way. I, just, I can't make this up. Anyways, I wanna show you guys the Heim and where it was being cut into. Hopefully by taking out the negative camber, it's caster, excuse me, and lowering the car a little bit, it fixes this. But these things are pretty beefy because I was scared of it cutting all the way through and actually touching the bolt, um, but it didn't. All right, here you can see the Heim, nothing's wrong with it. And then as I start turning it, you can see where it was getting um, cut into, excuse me, Heim spacer. And the bottom one was the same, just in the opposite direction. So it would have been like this, because of course the angle was like that. Um, but yeah, I'm just turning these around because they don't really spin and putting this towards the back and seeing if it does the same thing on this side. I'm going to go ahead and hit up Make It Modular and get some spare of these just in case. When I installed my Make It Modular angle kit on the middle Heim, I put both spacers behind the Heim, so towards the back of the car, and that pushes the arm forward, thus increasing increasing your caster, which helps with self-steer. Um, and I spoke to Matt Sopa about it. He said, if anything, it should increase your, your self-steer. But I think it's also what's giving me some of my binding problems that I feel in the steering wheel. Like the steering wheel won't go all the way in either direction. It'll reach like a stopping point, almost what, I guess what people would say self-centering feels like. So what I'm gonna do now is actually go ahead and put those spacers in the correct sequence, one in the back, one in the front, make sure the arm is nice and loose and retract that rear heim. So again, everything doesn't bind up. And that's how Matt Sopa designed the kit to work. So it should be a lot better. Um, but once I'm done with this side, I'll go ahead and do the other side. And then it's the dreadful ride height check to make sure the tires don't hit the fenders. Oh man, covered in dirt. I don't get dirt on my face when I'm working on this car. I didn't really work on it, but it's crazy how those small changes made the steering feel 10 times better. Now I am in my neighborhood, so I'm not about to start popping donuts and stuff, but it doesn't feel so bound up anymore. And it's not making all those crazy creaking noises. The other tell tail sign that it was way too bound up was I was really hard to put my knuckle into the coilover. So again, pulling out some of that negative camber, um and raising excuse me lowering the car a little more took away all of that binding issue that i did have and the wheel gap is much better now We're about two fingers that sounds so weird anyways the gap is much better in the front i'll dig that a lot more you can still see that the car has plenty of negative camber so we don't need to mess with that anymore now the rear though that is way too high we're at three fingers now the way that i did the front was by thread count so i'm at 42 threads showing in the front and then i went ahead and did the same thing on the other side 42 threads showing i am going to change my dampening once we get to dreamers of drift at the next round and i'll explain what those settings will be right now i have the coilovers midway and that makes it pretty comfortable for street driving
guys, so check it out. Um, I fixed what I wanted to fix on the suspension and the angle kit, and the car drives really good. Uh, in fact, in the next video on Thursday, I actually drove the car the furthest I've ever driven it to Austin to a car show, and it drove, you know, fantastic. It was great. I totally fixed that. Um, so just continuing to get more acquainted and comfortable with the car. Uh, I've been driving it around. Like right now, I'm leaving the gym. And as I was getting to the gym, the check engine light came on, and I'm like, man, I'll get it. Uh, I'll get a scan at the local auto parts store right before I take it back home. But it just ruined my entire workout. Has that ever happened to you guys? Like, I went in there, like, yeah, I'm zoned in. I'm gonna get this workout done, and then this check engine light just ruined the whole thing for me. Um, so that's what I'm gonna get checked out right now. Intake manifold runner control stuck open bank one. Basically what it means is that there's this valve in the back of the intake manifold that opens up these other running valves and that's how you get your horsepower and all this other stuff that's pretty, per like it's specific to Mustang and the 4.6. I don't know any other model years that had it. Um, at wide open throttle, this has happened before, it catches on the wiring harness and I think it's enough to trip the code. Um, so basically the fix is just to get it out of the harness's way. That way it can open and close smoothly. I'm also gonna hit it with a little WD-40 so those arms slide nice and smooth. So that bit of information wasn't really like important to this video, but since I already talked about how good the car drove, I didn't wanna refilm that. So that's why I left it in, but rest assured the car is fine. And this is the reason why I'm driving the car a little more on the street now, is to get familiarized with it and to find little nuances like that. It would have sucked to go out to the track and hit wide open throttle and then this code came up and the car started stumbling and doing weird stuff and then i would have been pulling my hair out trying to figure out what's wrong with it i also need to go ahead and get myself an obd2 scanner reader for this car so when stuff like this does happen i can plug it in i had one for the challenger i had a diablo sport that, I, that way i can look at codes clear codes and try to diagnose things if anything came up um, but yeah i need to do the same thing for the mustang um, because that again it ruined my whole workout so yeah something dumb once the car cools down i'll fix it but that's going to be it for the drift mustang i love the simplicity of this engine bay i've always thought these mustangs had good looking engine bays but that's going to be it for this i am confident in the car and the next drift event it's coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, all i really gotta do is clean the car check fluids one more time nut and bolt check one more time and we're good to go as always guys thanks for following along i know i've been doing a ton of 4x4 content especially with this bad boy right here the ram charger but we're about to shift into a ton of mustang and drifting content um to you know wrap up the end of the year so i appreciate you guys watching i appreciate you guys sticking along for the ride but that's going to wrap up today's video so you guys know what to do hit that like button hit that subscribe button all right don't forget and hit that notification bell and uh, stay tuned for the next drift event until next time peace out